I'm glad we can start some of these Advent devotions that we look forward to spending time with you on these Wednesday nights during Advent in preparation for the joy that is ours at Christmas. Tonight I want to talk about home. Over my shoulder here on the shelf back here, you see a model of our home in Tennessee where Lindsay and Jenny were born and reared, and that was one of Lindsay's art projects in years past. She did a very accurate reconstruction of that home in clay uh, just from memory and her perceptions of what was so important about that house, that home that lived with us. And so I'm glad to have it in my office, not only to remind us of our home, but also of her and her recollections of home. My mother, Nanette Hamilton, suffered dementia for over 10 years. And she progressed at first just losing memories, forgetting things, forgetting to turn off the stove or where she set things down or forgetting names. Not, not just old age memories, but it progressed to things where she was losing memories of years and then decades, where she no longer remembered our youth with my sisters and me things that happened in our family situations. Uh, she then did not remember our childhood. And the time came where she was talking about her children to me. And I finally said, Mom, that's who I am. I'm your son. And she didn't remember that. I was just someone visiting. So home, I found when I visited people at uh, uh, memory care units, much like she was in, she progressed from independent living to assisted living, and then finally into a skilled nursing care at the end of her days. She and others remembered home and often wanted to go home. And when you ask what that was, it was not the home that she had been in just before moving into assisted living, but her childhood home, her hometown, and many of her fellow residents there at the nursing care and skilled care wanted to go home to the place they remembered as children. Part of the amazing thing to me was though she forgot families and she forgot places she had lived, she forgot churches she had attended, uh, friends she had loved and they were no longer present to her. The last few years she thought she was in her childhood home and that her parents, my grandparents, were living upstairs, taking care of her and paying for all of her bills. The facility had no second floor, so they could not have been there. And as she was in her 90s at that stage, they had long since passed away and were in heaven. But to her, they were present, just out of mind, but upstairs. And they were caring for her, and they loved her. She felt comforted by those impressions, and I celebrated for her her sense of home, no matter where she was. As is common with loved ones there at memory care units, they, they want to go back to that place, that childhood home, those childhood people. Uh, for some, home was their childhood home. For others, it was the last place they lived just before they came to this facility. And for still others, their home was their room just down the hallway. And they felt comfortable and wanted to go home. And often you would hear them say, I want to go home to Jesus, or Jesus is going to take me home. So in their elderly years and infirmities, they felt comforted that he was close. And when the time came, he would take them by the hand and lead them home. Since Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden, we've always had a sense of wanting to go back, back to the way things were before, back to our homes. Uh, Abraham and Sarah, in their elderly years, left Ur of the Chaldees to find this new home, this promised land to which God was going to lead them. And they embarked on this journey to a new home, unseen, but promised and expected. When the Hebrews were enslaved in Egypt, oppressed, imprisoned, uh, God heard their cries, knew their misery, and he sent Moses to lead them home, to lead them out of Egypt to a land flowing with milk and honey, he said, this new home. Later, as exiles in Babylon, uh, the people mourned their homeland, their holy city, Jerusalem, their loss of family and connections there, and they separated from their families, their temple, even their familiar songs and their liturgies. They said, how shall we sing our songs 
in a foreign land, and we hung up our harps on the willows there. I imagine them looking west, seeing the mountain ranges that separated them from their homeland, Israel. And in the words of the psalmist, I look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And it ends that psalm by saying, and he will guard their going out and their coming in. The Hebrew custom of leaving home in the morning, you touch the doorpost and remembered God's blessings. And coming home at the end of the day, you touch that doorpost, the emblem there, and remembered God's love and protection. So even as you went about your daily routines, he was there and followed you home. Longing for home is, is really a deeply embedded in, in our own human psyche. Uh, we uh, have a hunger for, for more than just the memories, though, and even the imaginations we have of how things were. Uh, we yearn for what is best, what we remember as best, as we remember that which comforted us. And we anticipate what might be what can be with God's grace. We hunger for what we remember of the home and the people and the circumstances that brought us joy and made us feel safe and secure. We long for the home of which we still dream of coming. Home is, is, is not just a place, not just a building like this little structure back here, but a, a state of being a state of belonging, a, a becoming with God's help. And a desire really to be anchored again in a secure past and to be restored and to be refreshed, uh, to be pulled toward that future that promises fulfillment, that promises peace at the last. At Advent, at Christmas, uh, our, our homesickness is not just the desire to come home and be with family, to celebrate the holiday, but our, our yearning for a home as, as God beckons us to come and be made whole again, to be restored, uh, to belong again, and to participate in that kingdom now and the kingdom to come that is promised and fulfilled in Christ our Lord. Advent and Christmas is not just time of homecoming, when everybody comes back to the family home to celebrate the holidays and gift sharing and meals, but even to our home church, uh, to faces and visions and songs that are so familiar and sweet airs that comfort us and reassure us. Uh, we remember in the scriptures and in songs, God coming to the exiles and saying, fear not, I have redeemed you. And Isaiah he reports, he says, I have called you by name. You are my own. Isaiah the prophet then points toward home and declares, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our king. We're going home. God came and announced, you know, the wait is over. Prepare to go home. He entered our world as a babe in the manger in Bethlehem. He enters our waiting world even now and assures us that wherever you are, I am with you. We are at home in God's presence. At Advent, we remember God's, God's coming to us in Jesus, and we also anticipate his return of Jesus the Lord, the King of all creation when he comes back to judge the world and to issue in his kingdom forever. John's vision of our heavenly home was given when he was on the island of Patmos, you remember? During the time of secure, severe persecution. And he promises, I heard it with a loud voice, that God is with his people. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. He will comfort them and guide them. We will be at home with that heavenly throng of people around the throne, worshiping the Lord. All those ancestors and communion of saints of all the ages will be gathered in, and he'll worship, we will worship him and see him and see his face. We will be in God's presence forever and ever in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in a sense, we live between the Bethlehem babe 
and God's coming reign of justice and joy and peace and salvation. Uh, repeatedly, God says in the scriptures, fear not, I am with you to deliver you. My mother found great comfort in being home in her memory, her childhood home. And during her last years at the nursing home, my mother found comfort and belief that she was there with her mother and father and the people she loved all around her. And so I asked her one time, who is at home with you, mom? My mother, my father, you, you know them, aren't they delightful? And she felt safe and she felt loved and protected. And I said, I love you too, mom. And the people here love you too. I know, she said, isn't that wonderful? She was surrounded by love and care in the people around her. And Jesus is here too, she said. And I said, yes, he is here in this place too. And someday he'll take me home. That's right, Mom. He will. And he did. With that assurance, nothing else mattered. Actually, nothing had changed around her. But within her, and for you, and for me, everything was well. While we wait and we pray, and we sing the songs of Advent and Christmas, we enter into the exile and the loneliness of others around us, far from home, longing for the peace and joy in our world. We carry in our own hearts God's love and compassion and express to others our sensitivity and our strength. And with our faith in God's goodness, we'll make it home. And, and therein, they and we experience not only the home from which we come and the home from which we came in years past, but we also get a glimpse, a glimpse of the future home that we shall inherit forever, the home for which we yearn with Christ. Jesus is the path home, and one day he'll return and take you by the hand and lead you home. God bless you, and a Merry Christmas to you.